Hi, this is Debbie and I'm delighted to have finally found the time to share a video with you here. I'm going to be using the Waffle Flower Set Potter today. It's got a fabulous combination of cacti and succulents which are so trendy at the moment and this set just screams out to me to be watercoloured. The inspiration for colouring the succulents I got from the Waffle Flower blog where Katie shared some inspiring pictures of succulents used in weddings and such like which I printed out onto some paper so that I could refer to the different types of shades and colours you get in um, succulents you know from the pinks, the minty dusky grey greens and even up to yellows and oranges with often those bright pink flowers on the top. So I'm using the Gansai Tambi, apologies if I'm not pronouncing that correctly, watercolours from Kuritake and I'm going to stamp those onto some Tim Holtz watercolour, distress watercolour card with some Versamark and then I'm going to white heat emboss them. The watercolour card has both a textured side and a smooth side and it really comes down to personal preference which do you prefer to paint on. I prefer the textured side, I find that that texture just adds a little more interest in perhaps some of the areas where you're not painting. Being a lover of things clean and simple um, I'm going to place the design off to one side and having that texture on the watercolour card just adds a little bit of interest to the areas which haven't been painted. Before doing any form of heat embossing it's always worthwhile treating the uh, surface of the paper with a powder tool. I'm using the EK Success powder tool and what that does is it leaves a fine layer of talc like powder over the surface of the card. I'm going to stamp with Versamark and very carefully, I'm using the Fiskus stamp press, I'm making sure that I give everywhere a really good rub over so that all the detail of this beautiful stamp set are impressed onto the cardstock. And now what the powder tool has done is that it's protecting any of the surface of the card which hasn't been touched by the Versamark stamped image. So when you tap off the excess embossing powder, um, it should remove itself from all the surfaces apart from where the stamped image is. To melt the powder and complete the heat embossing, I've had my heat tool running on to one side just for a minute or so so that it's nice and hot, so that when you bring the heat to the embossing powder, it quickly melts it and gives the minimum amount of warping that you can get with heat embossing. And hopefully you can see the white heat embossing shining in the light there. I really like white heat embossing for plants and flowers. I think it adds a subtle elegance, but it's also really useful for when you're watercolouring. Heat embossing creates raised lines. Um, the heat embossing is not totally flat. You've got a raised outline of the images and that helps contain the watercolouring and you can add lots of lovely shading while still containing it to a set area such as a leaf or a petal. I've now speeded up the video for the colouring parts because otherwise we'd be sat here for ages. This actually does take a good 40 minutes or so to colour so I've sped that up so it's much shorter in duration. To start with the first succulent I've mixed up a grey blue kind of colourway with paints um, but for each of the leaves first I add a wash of water and then dot the paint into the areas which I want the most shading and then the water drags that paint across the rest of the leaf and I'm fading out slowly as it get towards the outer edges. And I've gone through add, keeping adding while the paint is still wet and the leaf is still wet, dotting in darker colours and letting the water just drag that and blend it with the colours that are already down. And adding shading this way, I find um, letting the water do the work, it's beautifully blended and it's really quite easy. As far as watercolouring is going, I'm no expert. Um, this is just a way that I found that I can get you know, reasonably presentable results by using the, letting the water do the work. I'm going to play some music now while I continue colouring and finish the image, and slowly adding more depth of shading as we go along.
Now this is the point I would normally stop my watercolouring and I've been challenging myself recently to take it just that little bit further um, to experiment with adding a little bit more detail. So I'm now adding a second layer on top of the initial base layer of watercolour and just adding some more shadowing um, with some deeper colours and then I'm using a barely barely wet, I'm sort of dipping the paintbrush into the water and removing as much of the water as possible so the paintbrush is barely wet just to soften those edges where the, the darker shading blends in with the lighter part of the leaves. I have said to myself that I should stamp out two images each time I want to do some watercolouring and take the first image to the point that I'm happy, that I've got something in the bag so to speak, that I've actually completed something that I would actually put on a card and then repeat with a second image and take it that bit further and just experiment. I mean that's the joy of doing what we do is experimenting and finding out that if you take it that bit further do you like it or does it seem overworked? Have you managed to create more shading that you've actually found that you like the depth that that adds or do you feel it's lost some of the natural sort of um, loose watercolour look and that again comes down to personal preference. I actually did quite enjoy adding a little bit more depth of shading and I'm pleased that I did on this occasion to take it that little bit further. I suppose the question will be if I took it further still what would the result have been there um, but at this point I was starting to feel I was happy with what I'd done. I've added a, um, a base layer there, a, a faint line across horizontally with water and then dotted in a little bit of brownie blacks just to give the plant pot something to, to sit upon and I'm now adding a light blue wash of um, water and light blue paint behind to give it again a subtle background so it doesn't seem that the plant pot is sitting in the middle of nowhere. Now that I was happy with how far I'd taken the, the painting I dried it with the heat tool before removing the painter's tape that was keeping it down and now I'm going to work out where to place my sentiment. I find using the um, printed acetate sheet that the stamps sit upon is actually quite handy for working out where you'd like to place the sentiment, which size you could fit on. The Relax and Enjoy is probably too big for this one because it would have overlapped where the heat embossed on watercolouring was. And I actually quite like the little Miss You one and I can fit that just along the baseline just beside the plant pot. Now the scary bit is that you're going to be stamping straight onto your image and you really don't want to mess up. So I find that um, the best thing to do is to make a few impressions first on some scrap paper to make sure that your stamp is fully inked up and that you're not going to get any bits missing. And when you're happy with that, then to stamp onto your project. Now, unfortunately, my camera shuts off after um, every so many minutes and it did so at this point. So you don't actually see me stamping onto the project. Fortunately I didn't mess up, I managed to stamp the sentiment okay. I used um, Versafine ink, I find that those inks they give a quite a very good detailed image and with this textured paper I really wanted to make sure I got a good impression so yes the Versafine ink did a fabulous job. And now I'm just finishing off with a couple of Pretty Pink Posh sequins which I'm holding down with some Tombow Mono Multi Glue. I think those came from, uh, there was a pretty, the little pink one there is a pretty peony, four millimetre size, and then a couple from the springtime mix in the six millimetre size. And I, I like to mount my panels onto a card base. I like to have a little bit of card base showing. And I'm using Samsis Stamp Fog Card and creating a top folding card base. I usually create a card base which is larger than I actually need and then trim it down to size so that you've got really nice clean edges. I'm adding some foam adhesive to the back of the panel now and because um, it's watercoloured and because it's also been heat embossed there is a little bit of warping to the card which is unavoidable to be honest but adding plenty of foam adhesive on the back means that this is then going to lie nicely flat against the card base. By the time I trimmed the panel down, added it to the top holding card base, it was roughly an A2 card. Not precise, but it was roughly an A2 card. And I do like to make my own envelopes to go with my cards. I live in the UK and we can't always get the envelopes that um, are A2 or 4 bar, so I make my own. I have quite a large stash of Basel um, 12x12 card that I had from the past. And slowly but surely I'm working my way through. And for an A2 card, I cut a piece seven and three quarters square and then score it at three and an eighth and four and an eighth on the angles. 
trim out the crossovers in the corners, fold it all up and then trim off the, the, the bit that sticks up, um, the corner there that sticks up into the main part of the envelope, add a little adhesive to the sides and within a matter of a couple of minutes you've got your own custom envelope to any colour that you happen to have in your cardstock you can match it to your project. I picked out this orangey kind of colour that I thought matched the terracotta pot from the watercolouring and I think it just adds that nice finishing touch to a handmade card. Watching this back I can see um, how I was taught that you don't put an, a card into an envelope front ways up, you always put it front ways down so that if there's any glue on the flap of the envelope it doesn't ruin the front of a card. So I can hear my mum's voice in my head telling me which way to put an, a card into an envelope while I'm watching this video back. And now after imparting that random bit of knowledge I'm going to leave you with some photographs. I hope you've enjoyed seeing this watercolouring of the Waffle Flare Potter stamp set. I really want to thank you for joining me and hope to see you soon. Bye!